welcome to the non-residential automatic shutoff lighting controls video, where you'll learn about requirements in California's building energy efficiency standards, also known as the Energy Code. We'll discuss automatic shutoff lighting control technologies, the mandatory and prescriptive requirements related to these controls, and the necessary forms to show that a project complies with the Energy Code. First, what are automatic shutoff lighting controls? They are shutoff controls that automatically turn off or reduce light output when the space is vacant. They're required for nearly all non-residential lighting systems in newly constructed buildings, additions, and alterations, although healthcare facilities are exempt. Shutoff controls include time-based control devices as well as occupant sensing controls. Let's talk about time-based control technologies. These include automatic time switch controls and astronomical time switch controls. Time switch controls allow for scheduling of lighting system operation based on an occupancy schedule, the day of the week, and time. A time switch control can be programmed to automatically turn lighting on before people arrive for work and off after they leave for the day. In addition to these features, astronomical time switch controls also allows customized lighting operation schedules based on geographic location and time of the year. Now, let's talk about occupant sensing controls. These include occupancy sensors used to turn lighting on and off based on detected occupancy of a space. Vacancy sensors used to turn lighting off automatically after an area is vacated, but requires lighting to be turned on manually. Partial on sensors, which turn only a portion of the lights on when occupancy is detected and turn all the lights off when the space becomes vacant. And partial off sensors, which turn only a portion of the lights off when a space becomes vacant. The sensor may automatically turn this same portion back on, or the system may be set so that manual on control is required. Now that we know how automatic shutoff lighting controls are defined and we're familiar with technology types, let's discuss the specific mandatory requirements for indoor automatic shutoff lighting controls. First, Let's go over the general automatic shutoff lighting controls requirements contained in Section 130.1c of the Energy Code. Non-residential lighting systems must be controlled by either an occupancy sensing control, automatic time switch control, or other control capable of automatically shutting off all of the lighting when the space is typically unoccupied. There must be separate shutoff controls for each floor, other than lighting and stairwells. For larger enclosed spaces, a separate control is required for each 5,000 square feet of floor area. However, in malls, auditoriums, single-tenant retail, industrial, convention centers, and arenas, the control zone can be as large as 20,000 square feet. General display, ornamental, and display case lighting must be controlled separately and Automatic time switch controls may include a manual on mode. There are a few exceptions to the automatic shutoff lighting controls requirements in section 130.1c1. These include lighting serving an area that is in continuous use 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. Lighting that complies with the occupancy sensor full off requirements in 130.1c5 or partial off requirements in 130.1 C7. Up to 0.1 watts per square foot of lighting designated for means of egress. Lighting in electrical equipment rooms subject to Article 110.26 of the California Electrical Code and any illumination provided by lighting equipment that is designed as emergency lighting. A simple type of shutoff control is a countdown timer switch. Under the Energy Code, these devices can only be used in two lighting applications, and the switches must be programmed in specific ways. Closets less than 70 square feet in size with a maximum timeout setting of 10 minutes or less, and server aisles in server rooms with a maximum timeout setting of 30 minutes or less. 
automatic time switch controls, other than occupant sensing controls, must include an override feature that meets the manual area control requirements in Section 130.1a so that occupants can manually control the lighting. The override control must allow the lighting to remain on for no more than two hours. However, malls, auditoriums, single-tenant retail, industrial, or arenas where captive key override are utilized can exceed two hours. Automatic time switch controls must also incorporate an automatic holiday shutoff feature that turns all the lighting loads off for at least 24 hours and then resumes the normally scheduled operation. This feature is not required for retail stores, restaurants, grocery stores, churches, and theaters. It's important to note that the Energy Code requires the automatic shutoff controls to specifically be occupancy sensors that shut off all lighting in certain types of space. These include offices 250 square feet or smaller, multi-purpose rooms that are less than 1,000 square feet, classrooms of any size, conference rooms of any size, and restrooms of any size. If the lighting in these areas is also required to have multi-level lighting controls, the occupancy sensor must function either as a partial on device or a vacancy sensor. Partial on occupancy sensors must be capable of automatically activating between 50 to 70% of the controlled lighting when an occupant is detected. Vacancy sensors require all the lighting be manually turned on by the occupant. If the lighting in these areas is not required to have multi-level lighting controls, the occupancy sensor must function either as a standard occupant sensor, a partial on occupant sensor, or a vacancy sensor. A standard occupancy sensor automatically turns all the lights on when a space is occupied and off when it's vacant. In addition, regardless of the occupancy control type, manual controls must always be available to occupants. The Energy Code also requires that the automatic shutoff controls be occupancy sensors that shut off all or some of the lighting in certain types of spaces. These include aisleways and open areas in warehouses, library book stack aisles 10 feet or longer that are accessible from only one end, library book stack aisles 20 feet or longer that are accessible from both ends, corridors, and stairwells. In these areas, lighting should be independently controlled, and occupancy controls must automatically reduce lighting power by at least 50% when the area is vacant. There are two scenarios in warehouses where the lighting only needs to be reduced by 40%. These include when aisleways and open areas have a lighting power of 80% or less of that allowed under the area category method, when metal halide lighting or high-pressure sodium lighting is installed. It's important to note that these partial off requirements in Section 130.1 C6 are in addition to the general shutoff requirements in Section 130.1 C1. For instance, a partial off occupancy sensor satisfies requirements in Section 130.1 C6 However, a full-off occupancy sensor or time switch is required to satisfy the requirements in Section 130.1 C1. These require automatic shutoff lighting when the space is normally unoccupied. There are two space types where the energy code requires automatic shutoff controls to be partial off occupancy sensors or controls that only shut off part of the lighting. These include stairwells and common area corridors that provide access to guest rooms and dwelling units of high-rise residential, hotel, and motel buildings, and parking garages, parking areas, and loading and unloading areas. For lighting in stairwells and common area corridors in high-rise residential, hotel, and motel buildings, Occupant sensing controls that automatically reduce lighting power by at least 50% when the areas are unoccupied must be used. 
these controls must be capable of automatically turning the lighting fully on only in the separately controlled space and must be automatically activated from all designated paths of egress. The controls are not required to turn lighting fully off in these spaces. An exception applies to areas where the installed lighting power is 80% or less of that allowed under the area category method. In this case, occupant sensing controls must only reduce power by a minimum of 40%. In parking garages, parking areas, and loading and unloading areas, general lighting must have occupant sensing controls with at least one control step between 20 and 50% of design lighting power. In addition, the occupant sensing controls must be capable of automatically turning the lighting fully on only in the separately controlled space and must be automatically activated from all designated paths of egress. In these spaces, no more than 500 watts of rated lighting power can be controlled together as a single zone and lighting uniformity levels must comply with the requirements in Table 130.1-A. When using metal halide luminaires with a lamp plus ballast mean system efficacy of greater than 75 lumens per watt in these space types, the energy code requires that at least one control step be provided between 20 and 60% of design lighting power. Remember, if the lighting in spaces where partial off controls are required also serve as a means of egress, the partial off mode must provide at least one foot candle at the walking surface, the amount of light required by the California Building Code in Section 1008. The Energy Code also requires that hotel and motel guest rooms be equipped with one of the following, captive card key controls, occupancy sensing controls, or automatic controls. The chosen control must turn off the lighting in the room 20 minutes or less after it has been vacated. However, one luminaire per guest room can be exempt from this requirement as long as it meets the residential lighting requirements in Table 150.0-A, is switched separately, and the switch is located within six feet of the entry door. Per Section 140.6, the following two prescriptive requirements are dependent on automatic shutoff lighting controls being installed, some lighting power density requirement exclusions, and power adjustment factors for large open offices. First, lighting intended for hair, makeup, and costume preparation in performing arts facility dressing rooms is excluded from lighting power density calculations if it is separately switched from the general lighting, switched independently at each dressing station, and is controlled by a vacancy sensor. And second, the use of occupancy sensors in large open plan offices qualifies for a power adjustment factor, or PAF, if certain requirements are met. To qualify for this PAF, occupancy sensors must be installed in an open plan office area greater than 250 square feet, be installed in an open plan office area that contains workstations, control only the general lighting or certain types of furniture mounted luminaires defined under Section 140.6A of the Energy Code, and be installed and configured so that they are not triggered by movement outside the controlled areas. When all these conditions are met, the system qualifies for a PAF between 0.2 and 0.4, depending on the size of the occupancy sensor control zone per Table 140.6-A. Next, we'll discuss the necessary compliance documents for a project with automatic shutoff lighting controls. During the design phase of the project, automatic shutoff lighting controls must be documented on the Certificate of Compliance Form NRCC-LTI-E in Section H. After installation, Compliance is documented on the Certificate of Installation Form NRCI-LTI-01-E. Automatic shutoff lighting controls are not directly called out, but the form must show compliance with the lighting control requirements in general. 
per Section 130.4, acceptance testing is required for all types of shutoff controls. Results from the tests are documented on Compliance Form NRCA-LTI-02-A. Remember, acceptance testing is not required for alteration projects where controls are installed to manage 20 or fewer luminaires for the entire project. All forms are available for download as PDFs on energycodeace.com. Acceptance test forms are provided for informational purposes only. Actual NRCA forms may only be submitted by a certified lighting controls acceptance test technician, and the forms must have the logo of an approved acceptance test technician certification provider or ATTCP. Additionally, you can access Energy Code ACE's virtual compliance assistant tool at energycodeace.com forward slash content forward slash project dash tool, which is available to help you fill out the certificates of compliance. Let's review what we've learned. There are two general types of shutoff controls, automatic time switch controls and occupant sensing controls. Shutoff controls are mandatory in all new buildings, building additions and alterations with a few exceptions. Occupancy sensors are required in several types of spaces. Their functionality is dependent on the space where they're installed. All shutoff controls must pass acceptance tests to comply with the energy code. That wraps up the non-residential indoor automatic shutoff lighting controls requirements. For more information, visit the Energy Commission website at energy.ca.gov forward slash ORC.